want everyone to take a time machine with me back to 1994. And I am speaking at a very large publishing conference in San Francisco. Is everybody ready? Wayne World, Wayne's World style? Blue, blue, blue. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jennifer Niederst, and I am a book designer at O'Reilly & Associates. But for the last year, I've been working on this new part of the internet called the World Wide Web. <laughs> I want to talk to you what it's been like making the transition from print design to web design. Now, last year, our editor, Dale Doherty, had an idea to publish a magazine on this new part of the internet. And he figured, well, if it has graphics, I'll need a graphic designer. I was very fortunate to be at the right place at the right time. And the result is Global Network Navigator. And this is what it looked like when we launched in 1993. And this is what it looks like today. And you can think <laughs> about it as sort of a gateway or a portal, if you will, to everything that's interesting on the World Wide Web. One of the things that we publish is the NCSA What's New page, which is a list of every new web ser server each day. Now, when we started, there were only 130 web servers in the world. They're saying by the end of this year, there will be 10,000 websites. So it's growing really fast. Another thing that we're working on is how advertising works on a web page. We're ad supported including putting ads in a banner that say advertisement. So there's no question as to what it is. But I remember the first website page that I saw, and I have to say it looked like this. I was not very impressed. It looked like some sort of clunky word processor, and I didn't really see any web. But I did learn that what I was looking at was, the, um, was a web browser. It only worked on Unix. But now I can use it on my Mac. There are new browsers like this up-and-coming Netscape browser. And you can see the same page looks quite different from browser to browser. <laughs> so I also learned that day that um, behind every web page is just a simple plain text file. and has these little special tags in it that indicate headings and paragraphs and lists and whatnot. And there are 35 of these tags to choose from. <laughs> Now back to that first tour, my tour guide, Rob Raish, started the meeting by saying, you know, you probably can't do what you want. I was like, dude, that's a downer. Like, this is a new, cool, cutting edge thing. But you know what, it turned out he was kind of right. I couldn't control the fonts, the font size, color, spacing alignment. Every page was gray with black text, and I couldn't change it. But a user can make it purple and green, and I had no control over that. So I started to wonder a little, why do you need a designer at all? But it turned out there were a lot of things to design. <laughs> there were a lot of things to design, like structure and navigation. And there's a lot of things you can do with graphics to create like a brand identity. So the things to know, in order for a graphic to appear on a web page, it needs to be in GIF format. Photoshop 2.0 cannot make them, so you'll need to use a utility like GIF Converter or Debabilizer. Also important to keep in mind, the majority of users have 640 by 480 monitors. <laughs> so don't make any web graphic wider than 600 pixels. In fact, at GNN, we make ours 515 pixels wide, exactly. And speaking of wide, it's better to make web graphics wide than tall, because since you cannot wrap text around a graphic, all the space next to the graphic will be wasted. Now, that new Netscape browser I told you about have their own tag for text wrap, but I really recommend don't design websites that only work on one browser. Now, Another thing you can keep in mind, a lot of people have black and white monitors. So when you put your text into graphics, make sure that they're very high contrast or they won't be able to be read, as you can see down there on the bottom. Now, finally, and most importantly, <laughs> most people access the web using a dial-up modem. So this is the formula that we use to calculate download times. You can see it takes maybe 30 seconds for a 28K graphic to download, which is a long time. <laughs> So there are a lot of limitations with web design, but I've come to embrace them as a challenge. And in the end, I've decided that web design is pretty cool. I like the instant gratification. It's a little strange for me that none of my designs hit paper. But I am putting something on paper. I've started writing a book about web design that will hopefully help other designers make the transition from print to web. And um, that should be coming out later this year. Now, it is 1994 but it's not too late to get started with web design. You can, use, you can learn new skills, adapt the ones you have, and I really recommend you do, because from what I hear, this web thing, it's gonna be really big. Thank you very much.